Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. As for me, well, she's leaving. I absolutely love this snake right here. Of course, this is Breadloaf, the Doomerals boa. These guys are from Madagascar, and they're just a cool animal. Again, about the size of a common boa. You know, this one here is a full-grown adult, and it's, you know, maybe six foot. A big female might get seven or eight foot. But, uh, so they're similar size, but to me, they're just even better animals. I mean, they're just so classic, such amazing animals. And I'll tell you a story. When I was like 17, 18 years old, I bred these for the very first time. And there was only a handful of people in the entire country that had ever successfully produced Doomerals boas. So it was a huge accomplishment for me. And it was one of the things that started to grow my confidence a lot when it came to breeding snakes when I was just a teenager. And you know, speaking of teenagers, you guys may know that uh, Laura and I have been together since we were teenagers and you guys see me on the vlog, you see me doing all this stuff, but anyone that really knows what happens at BHB or even at the Reptarium realizes that Lori is really the boss. I mean, you know, yeah, I'm the idea guy, I'm the passion animal guy, certainly I work with animals tremendously well, but when it comes to actually the day-to-day -day grind of making sure everything gets done, the bills are paid, the crew is running, when we need stuff ordered in, I mean, just all the things that, quite frankly, I wouldn't do well, it's all Lori's responsibility. Trust me, without Lori, I would be lost. Guys, that is the last time you're gonna hear the In the Dungeon song this year. Officially, last ball python clutch of the year. This is just a normal ball python, a really pretty dark normal ball python. And it was actually bred to a pastavi orange dream. And I tell you what guys, it looks like we have another beautiful clutch. What a way to end the year. Sometimes that last clutch of the year is just completely infertile because this girl hasn't been bred in probably four months. So she retained sperm, looked really good. I wasn't even 100% sure she was gravid for a while. I was like, I don't know if she's even gonna lay, but look at that. Good job, mom. What a beautiful clutch eggs. And again, and look at how dark she is, a sooty animal. So I'm hoping there's something genetic there for sure. So we're just gonna pull this one egg out, put this egg over here, and then we'll get the rest of the clutch up here. Let's go, God, mom's being really well behaved. Put that clutch over here. I tell you what, it's a bummer. We're done guys, 2020 production season is officially over. No more females grab it. No more surprise litters of babies. We are done. We still have some clutches of ball pythons to hatch, but then that's it guys. And we have two, four, six, eight, nine beautiful eggs. I mean, what a way to end the year. I mean, this year has been a dream come true. I mean, we worked really hard breeding these animals, really hard keeping things going, and it was the most successful percentage-wise python production year that I've ever had. So here going into 2021, literally starting here in the next four, five, six weeks, uh, let's hope that the next year is as good as this one is. We've got a lot of new animals up, a lot of new males up that are gonna produce some beautiful babies. And like I mentioned, we still have some clutches that are due to hatch and gonna be cutting. So, but wow guys, it's over. No more In the Dungeon song. No more breeding snakes for 2020. It is officially over after this clutch, but I tell you what, that was one for the books. Told you. Are you gone? It was supposed You're to be out a here surprise. Months, <laughs> yeah. Are you ever coming back? I don't know yet. <laughs> you don't know yet? I'll miss you. Do you think that I'll be okay by myself? Oh yeah, you'll be fine. Oh my gosh. You've got I've got a big list of things you need to do while I'm gone. Well you're gone. Take okay, so you are coming back then. Because if you left the list then that means that you're coming back to check up on me. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, good. Well, the truth is, is that Lori is actually heading down to Florida, right? You're gonna be gone for five days. Yes. Five days. Are you gonna go visit Drogo, our flock? Possibly. I turns out, you. turns out, I'm literally gonna be right down the street from where he lives. Yeah, so, yeah, if I can arrange it, uh, I think, yeah, Jade and I'll go check him out. 
Well, I'm, I'm worried. Do you think the place will still be here when you come back? Because I don't know if I can operate this place without you for five days. Well, I feel like you need to learn. I don't know. Mama's cutting the strings. What is it? The, the diaper strings or whatever? The diaper strings? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's umbilical cord. <laughs> it's umbilical. It's not diaper strings. Yeah, you've never changed my diaper. I don't even have diapers. What are you well, talking about? you're making about? it seem like you can't function without me, so. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll miss you. Have fun. Goodbye. I'll miss you, too. Guess what, guys? I'm pretty excited about this. New merch has dropped. That is right. We've got some salt and pepper. We've got, uh, you know, listen, not just gray. We've got this as well. We've got blue as well. And if you're not into the salt and pepper thing, which, I mean, who isn't? But uh, guess what? We've also got Diddy and Dixie because they are the cutest lizards on the planet. So, again, you can get some shirts in different colors. Also, you know, it's fall time. So, there's hoodies. You can buy hoodies. That is pretty cool. And, by the way, we also have this. That's right. We have salt and pepper coffee mugs for you guys to start your day as well as... Diddy and Dixie ones, isn't that absolutely incredible? Oh, and if you're not into shirts, you're not into hoodies, you're not into coffee cups, whatever the case is, guess what else we have? We actually have stickers. We have salt and pepper and Diddy and Dixie stickers. That's right, you can get yours, whatever you guys want, right down here, link in the description. You guys gotta get you some. This merch won't last forever, only a short period of time, so get you some now. Let me know in the comments if you picked it up. I really do appreciate your support. Add that head albino to albino ball python clutch hatch out, and I love hatching albino ball pythons. Again, this is a recessive mutation, meaning that when you breed an albino to a heterozygous like we did here, approximately 50% of the babies should come out albino, and 50% of the babies will come out normal, but are carrying the trait for albino called heterozygous, right? So in this case, we produced a little bit less albinos than hats, but we did pretty good. We did one, two, three, four albinos, and five heterozygous animals. And nevertheless, look at how absolutely gorgeous these albinos are. They all look perfect. All their eyes are great. No issues at all with them, which is really cool. I remember the first albinos were a little bit weak. Now they're strong as could be, and it's always amazing hatching albino ball python. Interesting clutch here that hatched. There's actually a pastel yellow belly bred to a cine cypress. Those are actually all incomplete dominant genes. And then we actually bred a red stripe as well to it, and there was one little baby in here that actually was fathered by the red stripe. The other ones were actually bred by the cine cypress. And basically, this is what a cine cypress looks like. You can tell the difference between a cine cypress and a cypress being with this striping here. Both of these cines here have both cine and cypress in them. Then we have actually, weirdly enough, another little lemon blast right here. Of course, the lemon blast was actually fathered by that red stripe pinstripe as well, but it's just a lemon blast, a pastel and a pinstripe. And these guys are all over the place. And then of course, this is just a little pastel yellow belly, really pretty animal, really interesting pattern too. I really like that one. Then we have this here, which is actually a pewter cypress, which is pretty cool. So that's a pastel, it's a cine, and it's a cypress gene. And then lastly, we have this guy here, which is actually a red stripe right here. It's just a normal red stripe. And that came from that pin red stripe. So we actually had a dual father clutch where at least two eggs were fathered by one and the rest were fathered by the other and there's a bunch of really cool babies in here well the continued wait for Lilith the frill dragon to lay her eggs uh, is on and she looks a little thin today I'm gonna be totally honest with you I'm not sure if she's gonna lay this year or not she looked fat she looked like she's going to now she looks thin I'm gonna go on an egg hunt hopefully I'll find it they're acting weird this morning definitely Nova is kind of like uh, wanting to run away from something which is unlike him for sure you okay buddy so I'm just gonna see if I can't you know maybe Lilith lay let's see what she's at she's down beneath her lay box right now. So I'm actually gonna go this way. And I just can't tell. I can't tell if she's thin or not. You know, see this is the thing. She may or may not even have laid. She may have reabsorbed eggs. Cause she looks a little bit thin, but not super thin, but she's definitely been acting weird, running around and stuff like that. So I don't know. Let's just get, go ahead and search and see if we can find something. I'm gonna put her back up in her tree. And I'm just searching over here for eggs first. I'm gonna search all around the entire enclosure. Do a quick search in this. Like I said, she laid two clutches last year and I was surprised that she didn't lay that second clutch this year. So I thought for sure she was going to, but I'm gonna look underneath first, see if there's anything on the bottom. Don't see anything down there. I don't see any eggs in here yet. Nope, I don't see any eggs in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna search the rest of the enclosure just to see if she could have laid it somewhere else. 
And if she didn't, then I think that the year is gonna be over. I think that there's no chance that she's gonna have eggs. Yep, no eggs in here. So it looks like we literally only had the one clutch of eggs this year. Like I said, I think she might just be beefed up just because she's like get, putting some body weight on. We'll try to uh, do a little bit better job next year breeding her, to be honest with you. We did hatch a couple cool babies this year. Not as many as we did last year, obviously. But nevertheless, I think that the egg search is over when it comes to Nova and Lilith. Still happy to produce some babies. Wish there would have been more, but uh, nevertheless, I still love them to death. This is a pretty interesting clutch right here because this was a cine that was het for paint. So it's kind of a visual header is like this animal. And it was bred to a mahogany. So we have some interesting stuff like this looks like maybe a mahogany het paint because the het paint again just shows a little bit of visualness to it. This looks like just a normal mahogany and you can kind of see just a really slight difference between the two. This has some striping in it. The sides are a little bit different and I think that that is that expression of the het paint. And then this animal here was ridiculous right here. I was waiting for this one to hatch out. This might be a good candidate for the Barney Ball 2.0 as well. You know getting into these dark animals like this. And this is a cine, it's a mahogany, and it's definitely a hat paint because you can see the striping on it, you can see the wackiness of the side patterns. So again, that hat paint is a visual header I guess the super paint is super, super cool. So uh, these guys are amazing and I love this dark animal right here. It came out wicked. Pretty cool clutch right here that hatched out, actually a pinstripe female bred to a bamboo silver streak Woma ball python. So a lot of stuff going on right here. And there's a lot of variety in here that's really cool too. This is literally just a black pewter. So this is a black pastel and a pastel. Then we actually have a pastel Woma black pastel. So that's kind of one more gene added to that. Then we just have a lemon blast here, another little lemon blast here. This is really, really pretty right here. This is actually just a pastel and it is a Woma, but it's a really beautiful, clean one. And then we have this monkey here that's pretty cool. This is actually a lemon blast bamboo ball python. Looks also to be a Woma ball python. So it looks like a pastel, a pinstripe, a Woma, and a bamboo. So that one is kind of like the creme to the creme to these guys. Again, a bunch of really good combinations of animals, lots of varieties. It's crazy to think that all of these animals came from one clutch. It's just so bizarre, but uh, but definitely some pretty cool animals. Guys, wish me luck. I mean, I tell you what, five days without Lori is gonna be, uh, I, hopefully the place is still standing when she comes back, but I think I'll get through it. If you did enjoy this video, here's a playlist you can run through. That helps my click-through rate, which helps this channel. I appreciate you guys doing that. Also, up here, you can subscribe to my podcast channel called Checking In. I would appreciate that as well. On this side, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.